I want to welcome you very, very specially uh, to this service. I believe that uh, God is doing great things in your life and in your family. Uh, so I want you to uh, please uh, share this, whether you're on, on YouTube, on Instagram, on, on Facebook, whatever platform, online church platform. I want you to share the link, share the link with someone, invite your friend, invite, invite your family members. Let them know the service has started and that God is moving in the midst of his people. All right, so go ahead and, and share. Go ahead and just share and just, and just get people on board. And if you're, if you're watching on, on YouTube, I want you to go ahead and like, like the page so that, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you can get notification and YouTube can also suggest this uh, to some of your friends and people that are connected to you. Praise God. Praise God. All right. So I want to welcome everyone again. Today we'll continue uh, the series of teachings uh, that we've started, you know, several weeks ago that we tagged Grow. And um, I'm going to be making a, a detour or a shift in the line of, of discussions as we go on from today. So wherever you're joining us from, I wanted to put distractions away from you and uh, get ready to be blessed by the word of God, whether you're local uh, to Nigeria uh, or you're, you're joining us from London, England, you're joining from the UAE, from South Africa, from other cities in Nigeria, from all around Africa, uh, from far away, North America, whether Canada or the US or the Americas, wherever you're joining us from today, I want to welcome you very, very specially as we dive into the word of God. Can you say this after me? Uh, say today, as I partake of the word of God, my heart is enlightened. Uh, say burdens are rolled away from my heart. Uh, say say the, the, the yokes are removed. And say, say the presence of God is all around me and the grace of God is multiplied over me. Say as I encounter the word of God today, I encounter the power of God. And whatever cannot resist the power of God will not be able to resist the word of God in my heart. Say, I open up my heart to be blessed today in Jesus' precious name. And everyone says a believing amen. Praise God. Praise God. I've titled this Transformed Living in Divine Health. Transformed Living in Divine Health. And I said, it's just a continuation of the series that we've been on uh, that we've taught grow. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, uh, the Bible says uh, that we all with unveiled face beholding as in a glass or mirror the glory of God. He said we are transformed, we are changed from one level of glory unto another as by the Spirit of God. We all with unveiled face. Uh, and the veil is removed in Christ. That's what the scripture says. And we have uh, that, that capacity, capacity uh, to be to be changed and to be transformed. And that's, that's what uh, I'm speaking to this season. Growth is a process of transformation. Growth is a process of transformation. And many of us need to get something straight this season, especially with all that we've gone through in recent time, that who you are, what you have, is not as important as who you are becoming. Can I say that one more time? Who you are, as, as in your status, what you have, as in your bank balance or your asset, uh, it's not as important as who you are becoming. So who I'm becoming is more than what I earn. Because you can be earning a certain amount of, of money in income, and yet your life is changing so rapidly, you are becoming, instead of a righteous person, a wicked person. Uh, uh, you, 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 instead of a sweet, loving person, you can become, be, becoming a cantankerous, angry Bitter person. And when we talk about growth, we're talking about positive growth. The fact that the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and, and, and when you read from verse 17, it says, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And then going further to verse 18, which I quoted the, the last time, then it, 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 it says that when we behold him, faintly as in a glass, uh, he said, we are changed. Yeah, we, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as a, in a mirror the glory of the Lord, said we are being transformed. We are being transformed. We are changing into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of God. What am I being transformed into this season is a big question that I need to ask myself from time to time. Who am I becoming? What am I changing into? Am I changing from being a weak person to a strong person? 
from being a sickly person to becoming uh, 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 somebody who is living in divine health or from being a peaceful person to becoming a cantankerous, bitter, and frustrated person. There's a power of God that's available to change, to transform, and, 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 and you know, to, to, to make sure that you are becoming who God wants you to become. If you study elementary biology, we learned about metamorphosis. It's a mouthful, but you know, uh, it's also an interesting word, metamorphosis. Uh, and it speaks to the change that certain uh, animals, especially the butterfly, uh, goes, go, will go through in a lifetime from uh, uh, being the egg or an egg, which is just uh, true conception, to, to lava, to pupa, and then to butterfly or adults. And uh, in life, one can get stuck in one process of transformation or spend an overly, overly extended period of time in one place. And when uh, you've gone through a lot in life, sometimes it affects the, 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 the speed of transformation or your willingness to embrace your next level or your openness to the Holy Spirit who is the agent of transformation or to the word of God which is another agent of transformation that we interact with from time to time so that you can experience the kind of change or transformation that God has in mind for you. Proverbs 4 and verse 18, the Bible says the path of the just, the path of the righteous is like shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. And you know what it looks like from morning time, from the dawn of the day. Uh, it's not as bright as the noon time where the sun is at the highest. And that's what the scripture is talking about, that our lives uh, uh, you know, are supposed to go through a period of transition which leads to changes, changes, changes. And the, the part of it just shining brighter and brighter. Things are getting better from one glory to another. And if that doesn't look like what you are experiencing this season, then you need to ask the right question. Sometimes it looks like everything is okay and everything is working out well, but the, the effect of everything shows later. Because maybe I'm over-focused in one particular area. Somebody may be listening to me right now. Uh, it looks like you're doing well at work and all that, but you're not paying attention to your health. It looks like you're doing well at work, but you're not paying attention to your home. So what you are hearing who you are, what status and position that you have gained uh, is not as important as who you are becoming. You can be earning more but becoming a, a terrible father. Who are you becoming? You can be earning more and, and instead of your, the health of your body getting stronger, you are becoming a weak person physically, a weak person mentally, a weak person health-wise. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Can I get a better amen to that? So the, the will of God for us is that we continue to evolve naturally and spiritually. We're supposed to be evolving. We're supposed to be getting better and, and evolving and, and, you know, and getting to greater levels like we have said before. First Corinthians uh, 13 and verse 11, you know what Paul said there. He said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And he said, when I became mature, I put away childish things. That means I evolved. Yeah, I evolved into something greater. That is the adult that is described in metamorphosis. Yeah, that Paul was saying in, in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, said that I've gone through metamorphosis. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. Yeah. But when I became a man, he said I put away childish things. It's like saying I've gone through metamorphosis. Uh, I've been like the egg, then I became pupa, I became lava, and then uh, now I'm an adult. Yeah, and I put away childish things. Put away childish things. Um, my, my suggestion for somebody this, this day is that you think about the things that you need to put away, the areas that you need practical transformation so that you don't get stuck. You know, it's possible to just get stuck in one of those areas. To remain a lava forever, that, that's a good rhyme. <laughs> so, you know, somebody can re remain a lava forever. Just, and your destiny, the fullness of your destiny is to become the butterfly. The lava can only crawl, can only probably stay in one place. When it becomes pooper, maybe it can start to move a bit. 
But you can imagine somebody that's supposed to be flying that is celebrating crawling. And that's how some people are right now. That's why we're calling you out this season. That it's time to grow. It's time to be transformed. In the story of, of Esau, if I can digress a little bit, uh, the story of Esau and Jacob in Genesis 27, it's very instructive how when Jacob supplanted his brother and got the birthright and the blessing, though in actual fact, Saw, I mean, sorry, Esau was the one that sold the birthright to him when he collected the stew of Lenti or red stew, which he could not run away from. Or, he, he, you know, the error of judgment came in and he said, Don't worry, you can have my birthright. Uh, what is this birthright to me? And all that and all that. And the Bible says, So Esau sold his birthright. Now, when the time of reckoning will come, Jacob took the blessing which belong to the whoever has the birthright, the, the, the right of the, or, or, of the first son. And then when Esau came in Genesis 27, Isaac, his father, told him, I bless your brother and I cannot reverse it. Yeah, I cannot reverse it. I bless your brother. And Esau cried bitterly, if you remember that scripture. Esau cried bitterly. And after a while, uh, Esau said, bless me also, my father. Don't you have any other blessing to bless me? Because the, the, what has happened to Esau was that uh, his destiny was going to be stuck in a particular place. Yeah. He will not be able to go beyond a particular point. You know, it's a curse for anyone not to be able to evolve or to lose the capacity to evolve into the fullness of Christ or fullness of whatever God has in mind for you. And this season... Such curses are broken over your own destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every curse of stagnation, every curse of stagnancy, every stock, uh, every curse that keeps people in one place, I decree over you today, those curses are broken over your own life. The scripture says that we're not, not, not under a curse, but under the blessing. Uh, according to Galatians uh, you know, chapter 3, you, you, you know that we're not even supposed to be contemplating a curse. But sometimes when we open ourselves up like Esau did, the Bible says a curse, curse cannot, uh, should not alight. But when uh, uh, we, 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 we break the hedge, Esau made a terrible mistake. Well, and somebody may be listening to me right now. Maybe you, 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 you have made a mistake in time, uh, in time past. Maybe this last year, the pandemic and all that, you, 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 you made terrible decisions. You made bad mistakes and all that. But I wanted to know today, that the mercy of God is bigger than your hero. Yeah, the mercy of God is bigger than your hero. But the mercy of God is also premised on something, which is that God is always expecting us uh, to do our bit, which is to seek for growth, for transformation, for fellowship with the Holy Spirit, fellowship with the Word of God that can lead to greater, a greater walk with Him. When Esau cried to his father Isaac, Genesis 27, when you read from verse 39, I'll read verse 39 and 40. Isaac answered and said to Esau, and the answer that Isaac gave to Esau was premised on <laughs> growth. So in verse 37, Isaac said, the Bible said, then Isaac said to Esau, indeed I've made him your master, and all his brethren I have given to him as servants. With grain and wine I have sustained him. What shall I do now for you, my son? Verse 38, uh, uh, the Bible says, And Esau said to his father, have you, have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me also. Bless me also, O oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Look at that. Then Isaac, his father, verse 39, Isaac, his father, uh, I read this from New Living Translation. The Bible says, finally, his father Isaac said to him, you will live away from the riches of the heart and away from the dew of the heaven above. You will live by your sword and you will serve your brother. But when you decide to break free, you will shake his yoke from your neck. I love the way that the King James and the New King James put it. King James says, when you gain dominion, yeah, when you gain dominion, 
said, when you gain dominion, you shall break its yoke from your neck. When, he said, when thou shalt have the dominion. <laughs> and the dominion that I was talking about there, which is translated in other translations as restlessness. One of the translations says, when you have grown fat. The picture there was like when you put a yoke around the neck of an animal. Uh, as, a, as a little animal. As the animal grows bigger, the tendency is for the neck to grow bigger and then the yoke will snap. I pray for somebody today. Every yoke on your neck uh, that is the yoke of the devil. This is the season. As you get transformed in the world, as you grow, the yoke of sickness will snap. The yoke of failure will snap. The yoke of stagnation will snap. Uh, somebody say a big amen to that. In the precious name of Jesus. So it says something about growth that brings restlessness. Yeah. There's something about growth that makes you feel like I've gained a bit of dominion. Now this should no longer be happening around my life. That's what is the blessing that, that, that Isaac gave to Esau there. And it's very simple. When you have gained dominion, when you have grown, when, when, you, you, when you become restless, he said, this thing will snap. It will snap from off your neck. Something will happen. Uh, your life will gain transformation. You will no longer just take anything again. The hold of Jacob over your life will be broken. The curse of stagnation and limitation will be lifted. Say amen, somebody. Yeah, that's the will of God for everyone. And that's why I'm teaching this today. Somebody needs to come to a realization that it's time for you to reject that stagnation. It's time in you, the health of your body, for instance, as we go into uh, this, the remaining part of this teaching, I'm going to be focusing more, uh, even next week, and upper, uh, I'm going to be focusing more on the health of your body. This is the time to grow from being a weak person physically, from entertaining sicknesses and diseases, to becoming that person whose body will reject sickness. Yeah, just like uh, Esau's life rejected the curse of stagnation that came from Jacob taking the blessing away. Glory be to Jesus. So there's a point you get to in life where you just realize that, look, uh, 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 I cannot continue like this. I cannot remain like this. In, in first, uh, second Kings, uh, second Kings chapter 6, when you read verse 1 and, and 2 there, the Bible talks about the sons of the prophet and how they approach Elijah, Elisha, sorry, and they said, see now the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. The place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered them and said, go. There's a point that you get to in life where you just know that this is not my life. This sickness is not my life. This weakness is not my life. This constraint is not my life. I need to break out of this constraint. I need to break out of this limitation. That was where the sons of the prophets were. This place where we are is too small for us. Isaac told Esau, you will get to a point where you become restless. I pray for the blessing of restlessness upon somebody, especially in the area of the health of your body, COVID or no COVID. It is the will of God. Third John uh, verse 2, he said, I wish above all things that you be in health and you prosper, even as your soul prospers. God has not changed his mind about the fact that his covenant children should live in divine health. Say amen, somebody. He has not changed his mind. I need you to personalize it that God has not changed his mind about uh, my, uh, the covenant of divine health that he has towards me. He has not changed his mind. He has not changed his mind. So whatever is going on in our world today, I still maintain that I have a covenant of divine health with Jehovah. And that covenant stands sure all of the time. All of the, not sometimes, all of the time. All of the time. It stands sure all of the time. All of the time. Glory be to Jesus. So growth is the greatest miracle of all times. Can I say that one more time? I said growth is the greatest miracle of all times. Because when you grow, when you make progress, uh, when uh, there are some things that will just drop off your life. 
it, they, they just drop off. They just drop off. They just drop off. Luke 2 and verse 52, the Bible talks about Jesus, even as the son of God. He said the child, Jesus, grew. Yeah, grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with man. Luke 2 and verse 52, the child grew. So if Jesus had to grow to get into the fullness of God's plan for his life and ministry and his destiny here or not, you and I also have to grow. Growth will bring higher capacity. Growth makes you more resourceful and useful. And growth gives you the ability to reproduce. Yeah. So that you can become the, I mean, you can enjoy the fullness of what God has for you in life. It's very, very important that we all have that at the back of our mind. But the truth about growth, especially as regards what I'm sharing today, which happens to be about the health of your body, is that it starts from within. It starts from within. Real transformation starts from within. The word of God is the agent of that growth. It's the word and the spirit. The spirit brings conviction, brings wisdom. The word of God actualizes the will of God in your life. That's how it happens. And it's when we pay attention to the word of God that we start to see the right kind of growth. Romans uh, 12 and verse 2, he said, And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to sickness. Be not conformed to diseases. Be not conformed to weakness of mind. Be not conformed to weakness of body. Many people are living in discouragement right now, living uh, a subpar life, you know, living uh, uh, with low inspiration or no inspiration because the whole world, the mood is a, a bit down. But the Bible says we should not be conformed to the world. We should not uh, allow, you know, the systems and the status quo in the world to be the status quo in our own lives. We, the Bible says we should uh, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And uh, the ingredient of renewal of your mind and my mind is the word of God. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. Yeah, it's the word of God. We can break the yoke of sickness, of disease, the burden of, of, you know, of mental health or discouragement or depression or the spirit of heaviness by renewing our minds with the word of God. Proverbs chapter 4, uh, reading from verse 20, 21 and 22. Proverbs 4, it says, my child, uh, I read it from, from the New Living Translation. It said, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. They bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. As a young believer, reading this passage of the scripture, I came to terms with the fact that I needed to take responsibility for my health my physical health, the health of my body and that of my mind just by spending time in the word of God uh, because it says, uh, uh, let them not depart from your heart. He said, uh, hide them in the midst of your heart. He said, let them penetrate deep into your heart. That's what New Living Translation says. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. He said, don't lose sight of them. And he was talking about the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. And I'm going to teach, uh, you know, a little bit more before I close on some of the things that I practiced for, for, you know, over 30 years of being saved now, with which I, I personally have been able to enjoy living in divine health from time to time. Even when health fails, we get it restored as quickly as possible because we cannot afford to live a subpar life. Whatever Christ paid for on the cross has been paid for fully, not uh, uh, he didn't make a down payment. He paid fully. So if he paid fully, I must experience it fully. And he paid for the health of my body. Yeah, he paid for the health of my body. So I must experience it fully. But he said, the responsibility that I have for me to be able to experience it fully, to be able to be transformed from weakness to strength, from sickness to wholeness, is that I pay attention to the word of God. Pay attention to the word of God. 
My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Listen carefully to my words. He said, don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep. Deep into your heart. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. Just like Colossians 3 and verse 16 says, he said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Richly. Can I ask you a question? How much time do you have for the word of God this season? I know most people work from home. And uh, most people are still trying to, to get things in order around them and all that. But in the midst of that, you, you, you take out time. You binge sometimes on Netflix. You, you, know, you stay on social media and just, just you know, rummaging through all kinds of posts and all that. Uh, and you do that, it's become a habit right now. Some, some of us pick up uh, you know, great books and read and all. But the greatest agent of transformation outside of the Holy Spirit is the Word of God. It is the Word and the Spirit. If I want to get better spiritually, if I want to uh, uh, get transformed into the same image of Christ from glory to glory, according to 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18, I must look into the mirror of the Word. And Colossians 3 and verse 16 says, let it dwell in your heart richly. For something to dwell in your heart richly, it means that you, you should seek to get uh, an overload of it from time to time. That's how, you know, how it can be richly full in your heart. It's, it means you need to seek to get, uh, uh, you know, uh, an overload of it. So rather than binging on movies and different things, it's time to binge on the word of God. Yeah. It's time to binge on great messages. I challenge somebody here today. Don't premise the healing of your body on uh, just a stroke of miracle. Because it means it can happen and it may not happen. But when you premise it on the word of God and you focus on the word becoming flesh, the word can become anything. Hebrews 11 and verse 3, it says, For we know that the words were framed by the word of God. Yeah, were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were made out of the things which are not seen. By faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. I'm repeating it again. He says, so that the things which are seen were made out of the things which are, uh, uh, are visible. Yeah. The things, it, 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 what I'm trying to say is that we, your attitude towards the word of God has to change this season. It has to change this season. There's nothing wrong in uh, you know, having somebody pray with you, pray a prayer of agreement, lay hands on you, or join the prayer platform uh, where uh, God's healing power is flowing and all that. Uh, that. But you cannot only premise your healing on a third party only. Like uh, well, somebody pray for you. I mean, I'm, uh, next week I'm going to be praying, even uh, dedicating more time to praying for the sick and all that. But what I'm saying is that Healing comes primarily from the word of God. Before we talk about the gift of healings and all that, uh, the Bible says uh, that the word of God is the agent of healing and health. Let them not depart from the midst of, of, of your heart. For their life to them will found, find it and health to all their flesh. And it's talking about the word of God. That same word that, that with which God frames the world. It is that same word that God, with which God heals us, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. That's what the scripture says. So, so uh, let me wrap this up by talking about how to appropriate the word of God for sound health, for divine health. Don't forget I titled this Transformed, Living in Divine Health. How do I appropriate the word of God for divine health? One, you need to be deliberate and intentional locating healing scriptures. You know, deliberate and intentional at locating healing scriptures. Especially if the transformation you are looking for is in the area of healing. Then you need to be intentional and deliberate about locating healing scriptures. So you can petition God based on his word and his covenant promises. And, it's, and he has not changed his mind. His covenant stands sure. His promises are yea and amen. That's what the scripture says. So you can petition God based on his promises. But you have to be intentional. Like Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 15 and verse 16. 
Oh Lord, he said, your word was found. If you say something was found, it means I was looking for it. Jeremiah said, your words were found uh, and I hate them. I, 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 I ingested them. That's what he said. I hate, I hate them. And your words, your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Jeremiah 15 and verse 16 said, your word was found. That means Jeremiah intentionally located, like you locate the right eatery, the right restaurant. You decide today, I want to eat Italian or Mexican or Chinese or local cuisine. And I, you know, uh, I, uh, that's what I want. And then you go after it or you put recipes together like we, uh, you know, did uh, during, re, re, you know, uh, um, Taste of Our Tribes uh, during Easter time. You know, you put some recipes together and you prepare and you, 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 you get something that you're looking for. Jeremiah said, uh, he said, your word was found. It was not missing. It was just that I went after it intentionally. Words in the area of divine health. Because we're speaking about divine health for somebody. It may be words in the area of marriage. It may be words in the area of your career. But because I'm speaking to being transformed from being weak to being strong uh, health-wise, that's why I'm saying you need to look like Jeremiah did in Jeremiah 15 and 16. Your word was found. You need to find the appropriate word. Just, I, I don't know if you have had dealings with lawyers before, or maybe a legal practitioner listening to me, or, or you have had anything to do with lawyers. When they want to argue their case, they, need, they, they will always need to look for the appropriate portions of the law and precedents, and then that's what they bring before the, the court of law, of competent jurisdiction, and say, my Lord, according to section this, subsection that, I make a case, I pray before you today that this and this is how this thing ought to be. And when they go outside of the constitution or the law, then there's what they call precedents. Then they come with precedents also. According to uh, 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 Ekulama and uh, or versus uh, James, uh, you know, something, in 1966, this was what the case, how the case was judged. So based on this precedent, I make my case today that you should hear my prayer that this is how this thing is supposed to be. It's the same way that we are praying in the courts of heaven. When the devil is trying to steal something that belongs to you, you come with your petition. You are deliberate about locating uh, the covenant promise that speaks to that issue. You are deliberate about bringing precedents. That's why we share testimonies. That's why it is called testimonies. Even in the law court, when you bring somebody to testify, it's a testimony. And on the premise of what the person has seen, we have seen and judged God to be faithful, to be a healer, to be our restorer. So when we bring all that to him, we command his power. Somebody, it's time that you stop sitting around and romancing sickness and weakness and disease. Yeah. Get into the word of God. Even for depression, for, for addiction. Get into the word of God. There's no yoke that the word cannot break. There's no yoke that the spirit cannot lift off your neck. Say a big amen, somebody. Glory be to Jesus. So we petition heaven with the word of God. We petition heaven. We find the appropriate places. Uh, Isaiah 53, when you read from verse 5, Isaiah 53 and verse 5, you, you petition God when it comes to healing. The Bible says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our, for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Look at all the things that, 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 that the verse 5 of Isaiah 53 is mentioned. Wounded for our transgression. So if I've transgressed and that's why I'm weak or sick, he was, he, he was already wounded for that. He was bruised for my iniquities. So whether it is transgression or iniquity or, you know, big sin, small sin, whatever it is, you know, even if it's something I brought upon myself, the mercy of God can prevail over my wrongdoing, just like it happened in the life of Esau. It's about growing out of where I am. And following through with God. Locating scriptures like this. And coming to God with it. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. So I qualify for peace. Yeah. 
I qualify for peace. And he says, by strife, we are healed. And if we are healed then, we are healed forever. Jesus paid the price completely. And when I come to God with these scriptures, then that, 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 that makes a lot of difference. The same scripture, 1 Peter chapter 2, when you read verse 24, 1 Peter 2 and 24, it says, uh, he repeated this same uh, Messianic prophecy about Christ and what he has done. And he said, who himself bore our sins on his body on the tree that we haven't died to sin might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. And he put it in the past tense. As I was rep reporting it in present tense or present continuous, this put it in past tense. The price was paid a long time ago. I am not supposed to be bound to sickness, to disease, to infection, whatever it is, to allergies. I can be set free from anything. And somebody's listening to me right now. You've come to accept certain conditions as your condition. You know it's possible for you to pick up, uh, uh, to, to, to celebrate an allergy to the point that, though it may be injuring your life, but it just says, it's just an allergy. Um, I don't need healing from that. I can live with that. Why do you want to live with something that has been paid for to be taken out of your life? That's a big question. Whether it's a sickness or allergy or addiction, it doesn't matter. Christ paid for it. By his stripes, you were healed. A long time ago, appropriate that healing today by declaring it in your life. Exodus 23, 25 and 26, he said, and you shall serve the Lord your God and you shall bless your bread and your water and take sickness away from the midst of you. Take sickness away from the midst of you. So if I'm serving God with my life, he said, if you serve the Lord your God, he said, you bless your bread and your water. Uh, so everything that I eat, I speak a blessing over it and it is blessed. It blesses your bread and your water and takes sickness away from the midst of you. That's the scripture. That's the understanding. That's the Abrahamic covenant. That's the covenant that we're initiated into in Christ. God has not changed his mind about that same covenant. Say amen, somebody. Glory be to Jesus. Psalm 89 and verse 34. He said, my covenant I will not break. Now will I alter the things that have gone out of my mouth? I'm still repeating it. God has not changed his mind. Psalm 89 and verse 34. My covenant I will not break, neither will I alter the things that have come out of my mouth. The, the issue is, do you believe and do you want to appropriate it? So when you find scriptures like Isaiah 53 and verse 5, 1 Peter 2 and 24, Exodus 23, 25 and 26, what happens is that you, you are gathering, you are finding scripture. Like Jeremiah said, your word was found. It, it, with this, then you can bring up your petition. The second thing you do is meditate on the word that you have gathered. Meditate on what you have found. Meditate on them. Meditate on what you have found. Yeah. Colossians 3 and verse 16 that I read before. It said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. 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 Hebrews 4 and verse 2. Uh, uh, talks about, uh, uh, you know, paying attention to the right kind of word so, uh, so that we can get on, you know, he said, for indeed the gospel was, was preached to us as well as uh, unto them. He said, but the word that was being preached to them was not mixed with faith in them that had it. That's where what we achieve in meditation. Meditation helps you to focus on the word. It is intensely thinking about something purposefully leaving something on your mind so you can think about it. You can roll it around in your mind. Yeah, it's just like if I want to create hunger, for instance, I start to think about some kind of food that I like. And I think about it, think about it, think about the last time I had it, think about how it was being, you know, uh, 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 prepared and all that. Remember the setting and all. Before you know it, I feel like eating that food. Uh, I may even be smelling it in my mind. Because I've meditated, rolled it over in thought so much that I may even feel full of that food. <laughs> That's what we do with the word of God. So when the Bible says, it carried your sickness and your disease, as you meditate on it, what you start to feel is that if it carried it, that means you'll not be here again. Yeah. It should not be. So if it's uh, a pain in the, in the harm, you say, ah, if he has carried this pain, if he has carried this growth, that means this growth should not be here again. And then you start to speak to the growth. But you must speak out of the standpoint of strength and faith and not fear. And that's what happens. You find the word. You meditate on the word, like I said. 
Joshua 1 and verse 8 says, This book of the, uh, of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may you know, observe to do all, according to all that is written in it. And he said, Then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Yeah. It's based on how I meditate on the word of God. Yeah. Let them not depart from the midst of your heart. Yeah. That's what the scripture says. So let them find a deep place in your heart for their life to them that find it and hell to all their flesh. But you have to get it into your spirit. It must become flesh. The word became flesh. Yeah. It must become flesh. And it happens in the process of meditation. And when you have meditated on the word of God, rolled it over in thought, you need to start to declare it. So the third thing is declare or confess the word of God continually. Romans 10 and verse number 10 talks about uh, confessing the word said for the, with the heart one believes unto righteousness but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yeah. And the word salvation there is the word soteria uh, which, which speaks to to you know healing, health, peace, prosperity. Not just uh, it, it's not just salvation to go to heaven. No. That we have been saved from the enemy. No. It speaks to the large life the, the Christ life. And that's what happens when we confess the word of God. According to Romans 10 and verse 10, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, with mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So the word that I've found, that I've carefully gathered to petition God, that I've meditated upon, rolled over in thought, that I've seeped into my being, that I've masticated like the way you masticate meat in your mouth, that has become a part of you, uh, that same word, you then start to confess it and declare it and say it over and again, over and again. You start to say it and say it and say it and say it. Joel chapter 3 and verse number 10. It says, let the weak say that I am strong. It says, beat your plowshares into uh, pruning hooks. Uh, uh, can you go to verse 10? Joel chapter 3 and verse um, number 10. It says, Be beat your plowshares into pruning hooks uh, 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 and your pruning hooks into spheres. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. So we confess the word of God. We confess strength. We confess grace. We say the things that God is saying. That's what we do. We say what the word of God has said. We say what the word that we have meditated in is saying. We declare it and declare it. We bring our petition to God. We say the sickness has been carried. Jesus paid for it. Yeah. Jesus paid for it. It's gone. It's no longer there. And the last thing is you exercise your faith by doing the things you couldn't do before. So after all the confession, you don't sit in one place confessing when you can actually start, you know, start, to, start to stand up and walk around and lift the hand that you couldn't lift before. I hope somebody's obeying the word of God today. Wherever you are, join, in to, uh, join to this service. Whatever you couldn't do before, uh, uh, it's time for you to start to do them. And as you go into this week, gather the word of God. Yeah. Gather the word of God. Meditate on it. Start to declare it and say it. And as you say it, you will see it. Whatever your mouth cannot confess, your hand cannot receive. And I say that one more time. Whatever is too big for your mouth to confess, your hand cannot receive. If you want to touch anything tangibly in this world, it must not be too big for your mouth to declare it. Because this world is controlled by the words that we speak. And uh, the word of God is a force in the spirit. The word of God in the mouth of Jesus is as powerful as the word of God in your mouth. So when you speak it, you will get the result that Christ will get. If Christ spoke to the fig tree and it dried up, it means you can speak to fibroid. You can speak to cancer. You can speak to any growth. You can speak to anything that's not planted by the Father and it will dry up. It will leave the place. And I mean without anybody praying for you at all. That's how we live out the Christ life. That's the New Testament Christianity that we preach. The word of God is, in your, uh, is near you and even in, in your mouth that if you confess the Lord Jesus, you see the hand of God in your life. Stop saying who will go to heaven and bring Christ down. That's what the scripture says. It says because the word of God is near you and in your heart and even in your mouth. So if we say it, we declare it 
and we see the result. Can I pray for somebody today that as you go into this new week, the grace of God comes upon you, the fire of, of God comes upon your heart, igniting your heart to love Jesus like never before, igniting your heart to get addicted to the word of God like never before. And I see addictions broken over your life. I see distractions taken away from your life. You will no longer run from pillar to post. I receive grace upon you to settle down with the word, to settle down with the word this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I receive the peace of God over your heart. Whatever is causing confusion and distraction, I stand against them right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I decree this week the peace of God uh, guards in and guards your heart. In Jesus' name, the hand of God comes upon you for healing, for health, and for definite transformation. Somebody, you will no longer be where you used to be. You know, the same way they went to look for Jesus, I think Luke, Luke 24, uh, and they could not find him in the tomb. That place where you are expected to be found, incapacitated, immobilized, this week, my God is raising you out of that place. If the, that, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead quickens your mortal body this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus, somebody is getting uh, a different medical report this week because the hand of God comes upon you for healing and for transformation. In the name of the Lord Jesus, somebody, you will not lose your mind. No, no, no. Not on the watch of Christ. As you open up your heart to him afresh today, I decree the hold of that mental sickness, mental illness is broken. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit of infirmity. I command you, take your foul hand off that person's brain right now. Take that hand out of that person's mind right now. I command that your mind is free uh, to incubate the word of God uh, from this point in time. Uh, 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 right now, regain a sound mind. In the name of Jesus, the hold of anxiety and worry is broken over your heart and mind. In the name of Jesus, that pain at the back, uh, that, that, that pain in, in, in the esophagus is removed right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, somebody with difficulty, difficulty, uh, you know, uh, to pass out waste. Uh, I pray over you right now. Whatever is blocking that track is removed in the name of the Lord Jesus. I break the hold of any form of infection over your life right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift your two hands to Jesus and bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him as you dedicate your, yourself to the efficacy of God's word this week and, and declare, say, I receive grace to dwell on the word of God this week. And the word of God is bringing definite transformation, definite change into my life. I am transformed from being weak to becoming a strong person. I am strong. I've been made strong by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Lord, we bless your name. We give you glory. We give you praise. Everyone lift your hands to Jesus if those hands are not busy and just bless him and just thank him and just appreciate him. Lord, we thank you for doing the things that only you can do in our lives. As we submit our hearts to your word this week, they look unto you and they were lightened and they were not ashamed. Let that be the testimony of everyone that is connected to this service. We bless you everlasting Father. Thank you, Lord, for our standing testimonies of healings and transformations in the precious name of Jesus. Sit in the attitude of prayer. Can I pray for anyone? This is not the time for you to log off. This service has not ended. So I want you to stay with me. Can I pray for anyone who may be saying, PG, I don't know Jesus as, as my Lord and personal Savior. Or maybe you said a prayer before, a while ago, but you backslid into sin. And you want Jesus to forgive your sins. You want to be reconciled to God. You want to come back to Jesus. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you as well. If you don't mind, you can just put your hand on your heart like this, your chest like this. I'd love to pray for you. Or if you're joining this prayer, just say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. So I ask that you forgive me my sins and that you cleanse me from every unrighteousness. Say, I receive you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. Say, I dedicate my heart to you afresh from this moment. And I decree and declare that the heavens are open over me. Thank you, Father, for the supply of your spirit. Say, fill me afresh with your spirit and give me a new beginning in the precious name of Jesus. If you just said that prayer with me, I pray that the grace of God rests upon you, that he holds you strong, 
I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to keep you and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And I decree that the hand of God holds you strong this season. You will not fall away again in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, in Jesus' name. If you just said a prayer with me, I want you to go to the chat room or the comment segment and let us know. Just say, I just gave my life to Christ or I just rededicated my life to Christ. We will love uh, to send you some uh, materials that will help and aid your spiritual development. Uh, we want to connect with you. So if you see a link uh, uh, in, in, in the chat room or on the screen, I want you to reach out to us, whether it's through WhatsApp or just chatting us up. Please go ahead, uh, send an email, send a WhatsApp chat, uh, and, and, and let's keep in touch. Let's, let's send you the things that we believe you need uh, to be able to be strong and live the life of Christ from inside out this season in the precious name of Jesus. I pray that God will give you a powerful testimony this week as well, and your life will never remain the same again in Jesus' precious name. And everyone says, a believing amen. All right, if you have been blessed today, I want you to put your hands together. Uh, give me some virtual hand clap uh, in the chat there. Uh, uh, j j just celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. All right, before we bring service to a close, I'd love to uh, uh, welcome everyone. Watch me with us for the first time. And at the same time, ask that you give to God. Uh, at the Elevation Church, uh, we, 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 we are committed to the preaching of the gospel and committed to touching lives and being a blessing to our society and our communities wherever uh, we are found, uh, online, offline, you know, just uh, the, uh, pushing out the right things, the right materials, the right events, uh, the right interventions in the life of people around us. So you want to uh, be a part of what God is doing at the Elevation Church and commit yourself uh, to giving, to tithing, to supporting uh, ministry initiatives at the Elevation Church. Uh, the, 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 the different ways we give uh, is now being shown on, shown on the screen and I want you to just uh, you know, bring out your device, give electronically. If you're local to Nigeria, the different ways you can give is being displayed. If you want to give internationally, that is also being displayed on the screen right now through the GT Bank uh, uh, details of wire transfer for international donors. And also, uh, we, we, you can also give from, on our website, elevationng.org forward slash giving. Uh, it's a secured site with which you can use any of your cards to give. And if you do have any issues at all with giving, please uh, uh, shoot us an email, info at elevationng.org. We'll be able to provide a solution uh, for you. And you can also chat us up if you have any of our WhatsApp numbers and we'll be able to give you better solution to give. Perhaps you have any difficulty at all. Can I pray over your gift today? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every giver. We ask, Lord, you who gave your best, uh, we ask that you give your best consistently in the life of everyone given today. As we go into a new week, we'll receive the blessing of open heavens over every giver. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you uh, for divine direction, for favor, and divine help. For everyone who is worshiping you with a substance today. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. All right, if it's your first time joining us uh, at any of our events, online events at the, the Elevation Church, I also want to welcome you very, very specially. Uh, I want you to uh, get into the chat room and let us know. Just put it there. Just say, it's my first time. It's my first time. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to chat you up. We'd love to uh, send you some more information about our church and subsequent events of the Elevation Church that we believe will be a blessing to you. So if you don't mind, please let us know if it's your first time and we will be willing to connect with you. Thank you again for, for joining us. And we hope to see you again and again in all our subsequent events. Our next Sunday promises to be powerful. We're going to be praying uh, for the sick. We're going to be trusting God for his healing power to flow. Uh, and I want you to uh, please come back. Be a part of that if it's your first time. Invite your friends, your family, anyone that needs the power of God in the area of healing. Let them be a part of our, uh, of our next Sunday event online. And we trust God uh, for his power to flow into your home into your office, wherever you're joining us from, and uh, God's grace will overflow into your life and you will never be the same in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. All right, uh, just one or two announcements and uh, we'll bring this to a close. Um, if you're watching us, uh, watching this on YouTube, I want you to uh, please click the like button. Uh, 
uh, so that this video can be recommended to your other, I mean, to other viewers. Uh, the more you click that like button, if you haven't done that, the more YouTube will recommend this to other viewers. And that's your own way of getting this great message to other people who will need it. Also, we love to grow together uh, uh, because it makes the journey a worthwhile experience. So if you're not part of our small groups yet, I want to encourage you uh, to uh, get, get online, uh, connect groups, Dot connect group dot elevation is the is the url you'll be able to register and be a part of a connect group also our online community is growing by the day and you can be a part of our online community from any part of the world uh, our online pastor is waiting uh, to, to to be a blessing to you and uh, to get you into online groups that will be a blessing to you as well so online church dot elevation ng dot org is the site if you get in there you'll be able to interact with us on the online church platform and promises to be a powerful powerful blessing to you in jesus precious name also uh, lastly uh, there are many events holding this season please listen uh, to the payoff announcement check on our website the advanced workplace development program that started last friday is still on you can still register to be a part of it if you've been a professional the last five years or more and you're looking at uh, changing jobs or just uh, you know gaining analytical uh, thinking skills you can be a part of that advanced workplace development program that's been put together by our career pro which is a career ministry that seeks to help people navigate the, the, the terrain career wise uh, and many other events holding in the course of this week please get on any of our social media platform or on our main website elevationng.org and you'll be able to familiarize yourself with such events and uh, uh, and partake so that you can be blessed uh, I, I, I wanted to stay tuned for the payoff and I look forward to seeing you again uh, next Sunday uh, make sure you enjoy a great week and keep the word of God in the midst of your heart and speak it confess it meditate on it keep confessing it and you will start to see the healing power of God working in your life in Jesus precious name have a great week and God bless you We trust you had an amazing time in service and we believe that you have been immensely blessed. Please subscribe to and follow us on our various social media channels and be among the first to get updates about our upcoming events. Parents and guardians are pleased and encouraged to give their children who may be feeling unwell the best of care at home as they will not be allowed into the junior church facility. Our online morning prayers continue this week from Monday to Saturday at 6 a.m. on Zoom and MixLR. God is answering prayers, filling us with tremendous testimonies and changing lives daily, even as we pray. Invite all your family and friends and don't forget, share your testimonies with us when they come. Online career counseling holds every second and fourth Sunday from 12.30 p.m. If you're a career professional, job seeker, fresh graduate or an undergrad, we encourage you to take advantage of this great opportunity. The link to book a session is now being displayed. To join the next batch of our online workers in training course, TechHive, please register using the link now displayed on the screen. Batch B holds on Saturdays 17th and 24th April. You will learn to identify your spiritual gifts and areas of strength. You will also learn the importance of service behavior, communication skills, and the tech structure plus value. Check out the treasures at our resource center. We've got inspiring messages from our previous series, Powered by Love beautiful gift items for special occasions, tech branded merchandise and amazing books by great authors. There are also soul lifting messages on breaking addiction, improving mental health, new believers and many more. All are available to download for free. To get these goodies, head on to elevationng.org forward slash resources. Make vital connections that will propel you along the path of your divine destiny. Join any of our small groups by visiting connectgroups.elevationng.org. And that's not all. We also have an online community you can grow and thrive with. All you have to do is simply visit onlinechurch.elevationng.org. Subscribe, connect, get counsel, pray, and make friends. Please call any of the numbers now showing on the screen if you need counseling. You can simply send an email also to counseling at elevationng.org. 
Our midweek event Switch continues this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Please note that Switch will hold at the Pistis Conference Center in person and online on our various social media channels. Make sure to join us and invite all your friends and family to be a part of the experience. We are here for you if you need to reach us at any time during the week. Do send an email to info at elevationng.org or call us on 0700 Elevate. That's 0700 353 8283. To reach us on WhatsApp, simply send a message to the number now showing on the screen. Spend more time in God's presence this season and enjoy phenomenal growth. Have a great week ahead. God bless you. there. Are you looking for a place to connect, to nurture and be nurtured? A platform you can share your interests, faith and to learn from others? Somewhere you can network and increase in influence, get some pastoral care and ever need to hone and deploy your gifts? Then we've got it. All you need is to join a connect group at the Elevation Church. Now here's how to sign up for one. Simply visit connectgroup.elevationng.org Click on the register button, impute your email address, name and phone number and submit. An activation page will open up. Type in the activation code you would have received by email and click continue. Set your preferred password and click continue. You'd get a successful registration message on the screen. You can now proceed to login. Once logged in, you see drop down boxes on the page. Select your preferred expression, interest, group, meeting day and meeting type from each box respectively. Click apply filter to see the groups relevant to your search. Select one that suits your interest or needs best and click join and that's it. There are groups for singles, couples, engaged couples, fashion, advocacy and governance, Bible study, travel, unique families, professional exam support groups, creative arts, investment, entertainment, gaming, fitness, I mean the list is endless. This way you can find your tribe and flourish with like minds whilst growing in your vocation and spiritual life. If you can't find your preferred group, simply email smallgroups at elevationng.org and we'll sort you out. Please note that you don't have to be a member of the Elevation Church to join a connect group. Connect group meetings will hold virtually either on WhatsApp, Telegram, Zoom or Microsoft Teams. We all need great support systems to prop one another up, cheer ourselves up, do great things and achieve all that God has called us to do. So sign up now and invite your friends, colleagues and family members. We can't wait to have you on board. Let's build stronger communities together.